Right here, I have three of these devices, the Redmi K20 Pro, the Redmi Note 7 Pro and the Redmi Note 5 Pro. On all three devices, I have Evolution X installed and today in this video, I'm going to be showing you the latest builds of the Evolution X ROM for these three devices. And these are of course separate builds for each of these devices, not a GSI or something which is installed and how it is holding up on each particular devices. So right now, let's start with the Redmi K20 Pro and this is of course, I have already shown a lot of these like ROMs on all other devices. So here we go. As you can see, I have unlocked all these phones. So if you're noticing this quick settings panel here in all three devices, I have customized it to look very similar. And this is how right now it looks like. If you notice this Redmi K20 Pro's one and the all like Redmi Note 7 Pro and the Note 5 Pro's too looks very similar. So why? Let me actually show you. You can customize it by going into the Evolver settings. Let me actually adjust the brightness just a little bit. In the theme section, if you scroll down, you will see this quick setting tile disco. So I have that turned on. Then this tint quick setting tiles using accent colors that is turned on. And we have the status bar opacity to 98 and the panel opacity to 100. With that, I get this kind of gradient look over here on the quick settings panel looks very very beautiful and as you can see it looks like this right now let me just show you the about section quickly and here is how it looks like in all three devices as you can see first of all on the redmi k20 pro here we have the android 11 based evolution x of course and these all are the evolution x version 5.3 lightning official builds and the security patch here on the Redmi K20 Pro is January 5th, 2021. Same on all other devices like the Redmi Note 7 Pros 2 and the Note 5 Pros 2 is January 5th, 2021 security patch. You will see the stock kernel here for the Redmi K20 Pro is the Perf G kernel. Then for the Redmi Note 7 Pro is the Azure Alfred Intro Plus kernel. So a little bit different kernel here. And for the Redmi Note 5 Pro, if you notice the kernel, this is an extended Evo++ kernel. And the build dates are very, very similar. As you can see, this is the January 17, 2021 build over here. And even these builds, as you can see, is the January 17th. And this one too is the January 17th build. So all the build dates are similar, January 17, 2021. That's the latest as of right now. Now, if you ask me about the differences, well, I would say there is the stock camera difference in my opinion. And if you have Redmi Note 7 Pro, you are kind of in a bad luck, I would say in my opinion. Because on the Redmi K20 Pro, yes, it is kind of not like perfect because the portrait mode as of right now is not working. As you can see, it says camera cannot connect because the NX camera development has not yet started for the Android 11. That is the reason why it is not working. But otherwise, normal taking photos or video should be working fine with this Redmi K20 Pro's ANX camera. And of course, like having the MIUI camera is a different kind of stability, I would say, in my personal opinion. In my personal usage, yes, I use Google camera too, but having the stock camera as the MIUI camera is just the perfect thing in my personal opinion. And also the front camera and stuff is working fine on the Redmi K20 Pro without any issues. Now on the Redmi Note 7 Pro, why I said you were in kind of a, in a bad luck situation. I would say here, if you notice, this is a old kind of Google camera and you can take basic pictures, but yes, definitely it's not a perfect camera. As you can see, this is the old kind of Google camera. And this camera UI, I don't like so much, but yes, you can take normal like photos or videos with this like app. It works fine, but again, it is a very basic kind of camera app. Now here, if you look at this Note 5 Pro's camera, this is again a MIUI camera and everything like the portrait mode and stuff is working fine. No issues. It, it takes a little bit of time, I would say. But yes, as you can see, it's not frozen. It works super fine without any issues. And also the back camera and stuff is of course working that's just showing black because I did not lift up the device. As you can see everything is working fine even in the portrait mode and in the video mode. So the Redmi Note 5 Pro if you have it this is just the perfect experience that you are gonna get. Now let's talk about the stock launchers on all of these devices. Of course the stock launcher is very very similar and that is the pixel launcher present by default here and everything is same on all of these devices like on the left side you get the Google's discover page and stuff. 
and if you swipe up you get the app drawer here and that is pretty much it and you can disable the suggestions so that's a good thing but of course on all of these devices there is no double tap to sleep anywhere on the home screen as you can see but all of them has the double tap to sleep on the status bar without any issues that works super fine and here let me right now show you the quick settings panel again so here is how the quick settings panel again looks like and all of them has this default android 11 screen recorder as you are noticing this one i'm talking about and with this you can record the device audio and the microphone audio at the same time on all of these devices across all these devices and if you want to add multiple toggles there are some options okay so i have added couple of toggles here let me show you one by one on all of these like quick setting toggle settings here on the redmi k20 pro if you're noticing yes there is the dc dimming which is there but of course this is a device specific feature it won't be there in like all of these redmi note 7 pro and the note 5 pro because those has ips displays and the k20 pro has amoled display which supports that dc dimming kind of thing so yeah that's a special feature for the redmi k20 pro of course but otherwise the quick setting panel is very very similar there is no difference at all except for this dc dimming and like device specific features here let me tell you one of my friend asked me about this like he has a broken power button so he needs that advanced reboot kind of thing or the normal reboot too in the quick settings panel so that is why i'm like showing you this as you can see there is this reboot toggle which is very helpful as you can see right now it is showing recovery and if you tap one more time it shows power off and this just shows what it will do if you tap and hold it so right now as you can see it shows recovery so if i tap and hold on this recovery button it will directly reboot to recovery so this is a power menu kind of thing which you get normally in the quick settings panel and it is not present in all other roms but it is kind of a special unique feature in my opinion and as you can see this feature is also there across all these devices so this is a very helpful if you have a broken power button or something it might help so this is the point where the evolution x like surpasses miui kind of stuff and it is way way better than miui actually that you can do so much stuff with a custom rom and if you want to get rid of miui of course click on the card right there or if you want to flash this evolution x rom click on the card right there on the top right corner or you can check the description too now again we have the oxygen os screen recorder here on all of these devices as you can see this is the one i'm talking about the android 11's one is this one and this is the one is the oxygen os kind of screen recorder and with this as you can see even on the redmi note 5 pro there is the option to change the resolution then the bit rate and you can change like the number of frames audio source and video orientation hide floating widget and these kind of stuff is there so yeah a lot of options that you get here and the same oxygen os screen recorder you will find for the redmi note 7 pro and on the redmi k20 pro 2 and of course if you want to see the fps info you can just tap on this fps counter right on the k20 pro as you can see fps counter it shows so yeah that works fine and also there is this fps info overlay for the redmi note 7 pro same thing and we have the fps info overlay too for the redmi note 5 pro so again same thing it shows the fps whenever you are gaming or even while you are doing like normal stuff in the ui it will show up over there and night light and stuff is of course there you can like use that if you want to on all other devices now talking about customizations let me go into it so right now i'm in the evolver settings and this is how the customization panel looks like and if you will notice it as you can see it is very very similar looking ui in my opinion and you can just notice how similar it looks and in everywhere you will see similarities and there is almost like no difference at all in the customization section now again in the redmi k20 pro you will find a lot more things like let me show you here inside lock screen we have this fingerprint icon and stuff for the redmi k20 pro because this is a device specific thing it has the fingerprint on the display so that is why we get these and we do not get this for these redmi note 7 pro or the redmi k20 pro of course and again the fingerprint scanner animation and stuff you can choose over here on the redmi k20 pro which you do not get for the redmi note 7 pro or the k20 pro of course other than that the newest feature right now is in the quick settings panel so a lot of people asked about it i do not know why this feature is so important for them but yes let me show you in the quick settings panel so right now if you scroll down a little bit in the quick settings panel as you can see you will have this brightness slider at the bottom option so a lot of people missed it i guess as you can see right now the brightness slider is on the bottom on this device so yes on all of these three devices as you can see the brightness slider is on the bottom so definitely the evolution x gives all the features across all their devices and here you have the proof that the newest feature as of right now is this brightness slider on the bottom and that is showing up across all these devices
Now let me show you an interesting feature that is there across all these devices again and that is the brightness control gesture. I really like it and as you can see if I try to slide my finger on the status bar as you can see the brightness increases and decreases if you are noticing and on the Redmi Note 7 Pro 2 as you can see it has increased right now if I swipe as you can see it has decreased again. So yeah this feature is really interesting and it is also working on the Redmi Note 5 Pro as you are noticing. So yeah, across all these devices, these kind of features work very, very well. Now, let me show you the three finger screenshot gesture on the Redmi Note 5 Pro. As you can see, it is working. You can delete, edit or share. And on the Redmi Note 7 Pro 2, again, it is working. You can delete, edit and share. And on the Redmi K20 Pro 2, it is working fine. The delete, edit and share, you can like do anything with that. So yeah, these kind of gestures and features are available on across all of these devices. Now talking about the sound quality on all of these devices, I would say in the sound settings on the Redmi K20 Pro, you will find this Mi Audio Dirac and that works super fine and you can change these like headset presets from here of course but like to find this feature you will have to go to the like bottom of the settings on these Redmi Note 7 Pro and the Note 5 Pro. Here you will see these violet parts and there you will see the Xiaomi parts for the Redmi Note 5 Pro and here let me go here in the settings and if you go here as you can see there is the me sound enhancer and you can choose these youth edition and stuff the same thing which you will find on the redmi k20 pro of course and here as you can see there are all these options and here again let me show you there are all these options and the sound quality via headphone jack or bluetooth again is great on all of these devices but on the redmi k20 pro you will get this hi-fi audio option that is simply not present because hardware limitations i guess so yeah, this Hi-Fi audio option is just present for the Redmi K20 Pro, not for the Note 7 Pro or the Note 5 Pro of course, because that is a device specific thing. Now here inside this violet parts, you will see this like SLNX status enforcing and stuff, but on the Redmi Note 5 Pro, you will have some like plus points over here, I would say that there is the headphone gain that is very cool. If, let me show you, this is the Redmi Note 5 Pro again, and we have the headphone gain here, and we have the microphone gain too. Then if you scroll down, you will have this backlight dimmer and this is very cool that you can turn it on and the display goes really, really low while you are using at night or something. And there is the KCL or the display calibration. You can turn it on if you want to. Let me show you. As you can see, there is the whole RGB control, the saturation value, everything you can control from here. Very cool feature in my opinion. You can set it on boot or you can like turn on grayscale display or something. So yeah, very cool, interesting features. There is the torch brightness too for the Redmi Note 5 Pro. This torch brightness and stuff you can control with this like brightness value or the strength, the vibration intensity over here. You can control the haptic feedback and stuff. You can control everything. So first let's talk about the DRM info or the wide find security. Well, you will see it's L1 on your device if you have not broke it like me. But on the Redmi K20 Pro as you can see for me it shows L3 because I flashed the persist thing like the persist image. That is why it has become L3 right now and it is for lifetime. For you, it will show L1 if you have not broken it. So yeah, on the Redmi K20 Pro, it is supposed to show L1 here. But on the Redmi Note 7 Pro, as you can see, the security level shows as L1. As it's intact, I never flashed the persist image on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and still it shows the L1 certificate over there. So that is cool. And for the Redmi Note 5 Pro, again, it is L3 because like from the beginning, it has been L3. No issues with that, of course. Now let's talk about using banking apps on all three devices and here as you are noticing while doing the safety net test it passes the test right out of the box across all these devices. So that means you can use banking apps on any of these devices with the Evolution XROM without any issues you do not have to even install Magisk or use Magisk Hide to use banking apps here. Now let's talk about the IR Blaster because these two devices has the IR Blaster but the Redmi K20 Pro simply does not have the IR Blaster so I cannot simply talk about it. I'll just put this device here. So right now let me just talk about the IR Blaster situation over here. Now on the Redmi Note 7 Pro I have seen it is like I would say it is not working because it is doing weird things but on the Redmi Note 5 Pro it is working flawlessly. Let me show you with this LED RGB remote app and let me open it up over here too. So here with this LED RGB remote app, if I like put this here and if I tap, as you can see, the IR Blaster is working flawlessly, no issues here, no kind of freezes or something. The IR Blaster totally working fine with the Redmi Note 5 Pro. 
but I have flashed the ROM with the latest firmware and stuff on the Redmi Note 7 Pro but I think as of right now on Android 11 this is something kind of a device specific issue but it works only for once let me actually show you here just notice what will happen so if I tap you might have seen it worked for once but right now the UI will get stuck as you can see right now it is stuck and the device will force reboot just notice So as you can see, it's forced rebooting, but on the Redmi Note 5 Pro, the IR Blaster is totally working fine. But if I try to use the IR Blaster on the Redmi Note 7 Pro, here it freezes and reboots the device. So this is a bug and the IR Blaster is kind of not working as of right now in my opinion. Now this is how the system panel looks like and all of these devices has a system updater as you are noticing. And you can check for updates whenever there is a new update, it will show up over here. You can either use OT update or you can flash by watching that like manually updating guide from the card right there and you can update on all these devices. On the Redmi K20 Pro and the Note 7 Pro I would say it depends if you are decrypted or not. On the Redmi K20 Pro to get decrypted or to flash while you are decrypted you need to flash the ROM file and the fcrypt disabler too together that's how you update and on the Redmi Note 7 Pro you do not need to like actually flash any fcrypt disabler because the orange box recovery supports decryption itself so you just enable that option for the Redmi Note 7 Pro and you flash the latest build and reboot that's how simple it is and for the Redmi Note 5 Pro it is very simple it works like either way if you even if you are encrypted or decrypted it does not matter you can just flash the ROM and if you are encrypted on like all of these devices just like enter your password and like flash the ROM that will work super fine while you are updating. For the Redmi K20 Pro the developer's name is Joe Huab and he has done a really really impressive job here like he has been doing it like from a year or so and that is really great thing for the development and here for the Redmi Note 7 Pro the developer's name is Yashin Ali and he has done a really amazing job too but I would love to see uh, like stock MIUI camera here for the Redmi Note 7 Pro again and for the Redmi Note 5 Pro we have the developer's name here as Zishan and he has done an incredible job for the Redmi Note 5 Pro 2 to give this kind of performance and the customization with a stock Android like feeling custom ROM that is the Evolution X. In my personal opinion I have been daily driving with this ROM on the Redmi K20 Pro and I have had no issues so far and I would say really great experience with this Evolution X. And if you want to see the benchmarks of these particular ROMs on these devices, here are the benchmarks for you guys. And while charging, let me show you on the Redmi K20 Pro. As you can see, it shows this kind of animation and the charging info shows up on the always on display too and on the like lock screen itself as you can see and it shows up here like about the fingerprint scanner icon and it looks very cute over here on this like side over here that I'm noticing new and it was there on the bottom earlier but they moved it on the like top of the fingerprint scanner looks very cool now let me show you on the redmi note 7 pro this is how it looks like and it looks cool in the bottom too because this one does not have a fingerprint scanner so it's fine to like see it on the bottom right here as you can see and of course again 18 watt fast charging works on both of the redmi k20 pro and the note 7 pro and for the redmi note 5 pro again that animation shows up and it shows the charging info on the bottom the battery is above 86 percent so it won't pull much but yeah it definitely pulls above 2000 when it's like possible and talking about the battery life on all of these devices i would say on the redmi k20 pro the battery life is pretty good it gives me around seven plus hours of screen on time without any issues so the battery life is great on the Redmi K20 Pro. On the Redmi Note 7 Pro, it can definitely give you about six to seven hours of screen on time too. But as the Redmi Note 5 Pro is quite old, it will give you about five to six hours of screen on time on this particular device. Now, if you are worried about the fingerprint scanner speeds on all of these ROMs and all of these devices, first, let me show you the Redmi K20 Pros. And here, as you can see, unlocked super fast, no issues so far and on the redmi note 7 pro even here as you can see the fingerprint scanner is working and works flawlessly here and for the redmi note 5 pro 2 it works flawlessly let me show you as you can see so fingerprint scanner is not a problem here for any of these devices so thank you so much for watching this video guys give it a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel down there if you have not yet this is tito from kdn tech signing off for today let me in the comments what you guys think about this kind of video and share this video with your friends if you feel like this is Tiro from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.